Hello, in this video we're going to go over whether root 2 to the power of root 3 or root 3 to the power of root 2 is larger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with an elementary solution understandable for pretty much everybody who knows, uh, who has some basic understanding of uh, pre-calculus and then a solution involving calculus, a generalization to how to compare a to the power of b and b to the power of a. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, since we have exponentiation, we're going to take the log of both sides. So what we're going to get is root 2 to the power of root 3, we're going to take log of that, and we have to compare that with log of root 3 to the power of root 2. Now, because logarithm is an increasing function, we don't need to worry about flipping the direction of inequality. So the same inequality would hold here as well. Now we are going to use rules of uh, logs. So the exponentiation comes to the front. So we get root 3 log root 2. And then we are comparing that with root 2 log root 3. Now we again have an exponential here. This is 2 to the power of 1 half. This is 3 to the power of 1 half. So we can bring the exponents to the front. So we will get root 3 over 2 log of 2 and the other one is root 2 over 2 log of 3. Now, we have a 2 at the bottom of both of them, and 2 is a positive number, so we can ignore that. So essentially what we need to do is compare root 3 log 2 and root 2 log 3. Now, because I have square roots, I'm going to raise both sides to the power of 2, and again, because both sides are positive, the direction of inequality would not change. So this side gives me 3 log of 2 squared, and I'm comparing that to 2 log of 3 squared. Now, of course, log of 2 squared is, is different from log of 2 squared, but I can rewrite this as 3 log of 2 times log of 2, and 2 log of 3 times log of 3. 3 log of 2 is going to be log of 8, because the 3 comes to the exponent and that would give me log of 2 cubed which is 8 and that's log of 2 and I'm comparing that with log of 3 squared which is 9 times log of 3. Clearly log of 3 is more than log of 2 and log of 9 is more than log of 8 and everything is positive which means the right hand side is in fact larger. So that means in fact root 3 to the power of root 2 is larger than root 2 to the power of root 3. So this was the elementary solution. Now I'm going to provide you with a solution that works in a more general case but it does involve calculus. So here's what we're going to do. We want to see whether a to the b is larger or b to the a is larger. Since we are raising to exponents we need a and b to be positive. So a and b must be positive because otherwise you will end up getting things like negative 1 to the power of 1 half, which doesn't really make sense. So it's not a real number. So we're going to have to compare these two. So the first step would be the same. We're going to take the log of both sides. Since I'm doing calculus, I'm going to take natural log. So I will do natural log of a to the power of b, and I'm comparing that with natural log of b to the power of a. Of course, I can use the same rules of logarithms. So that would be b natural log a and a natural log b. Now, I would like to divide by natural log a natural log b since um, that would give me a function of one variable on each side. So dividing by natural log of a times natural log of b, I would end up with b, natural, b over natural log b on one side and a over natural log a on the other side. In order to be able to do that, we need this. We need natural log of a and natural log of b to be non-zero. So I have to take the case when natural log of a is zero and deal with that separately. So if a is one, which is when natural log of a is zero, then I'm comparing one to the b and b to the one. So which one is larger? That's very easy to check. So this is the same as one and this is the same as b. So we can easily compare these two. If b is larger than 1, then b to the 1 is larger than 1 to the b. Is b is, if b is less than 1, then it would be the other way around. So we can assume that b and a are not 1. So let's assume for now that a and b are not 1. Now, I'm trying to compare b, to the, b over natural log b and a over natural log a. So I will take that 
as a function. So I will call that x over natural log x. And I'm going to understand the behavior of this function. So for those of you who are familiar with calculus, the way you understand the behavior of function would be to take the derivative, understand when the function is increasing, when the function is decreasing, and that would give us a very good understanding of the function. So we're going to take the derivative. And of course, you can do that just plugging into Wolfram Alpha or whatever software that you're using and get the graph of this function. And I will do that uh, at the end. But I want to do that manually first. So taking the derivative of this, we get the derivative of numerator, which is 1 times denominator, minus derivative of denominator, which is 1 over x, times the numerator. So that gives you 1. So setting that equal to 0, we get natural log of x equals 1, which means x is e. Now, if you look at the derivative of this function, f prime of x, natural log of x minus 1 over natural log of x squared would be, so I'm going to put the x here, 0, 1, e, and larger values. f prime of x is, of course, 0 at x equals e. It is positive to the right of it and negative to the left of it. And of course, at 1, it is not defined. So this is not defined. If you look at f of x, it would be decreasing here, decreasing here, and increasing here. So that would mean at x equals e, I would have a local minimum. So now let's see what happens when x approaches infinity and when x approaches 1 from the right. So limit of x over natural log of x as x approaches infinity is in fact infinity because polynomials grow faster than natural log. So this would be infinity. And limit of x over natural log of x as x approaches 1 from the right would be numerator is 1, denominator approaches 0, which means that would also approach infinity. So the function approaches infinity on when x approaches infinity, and it also approaches infinity when x approaches 1 from the right. Let's see what happens when x approaches 1 from the left. This is equal to, so it's the same thing except that it approaches negative infinity. Let's see what happens when x approaches 0 from the right. So the limit x over natural log x as x approaches 0 from the right. x approaches 0, natural log of x approaches negative infinity. So this approaches 0. This approaches negative infinity because x approaches 0. So 0 over negative infinity, that would become 0. So this tells us that the graph would look like something like this. I have put this one in Wolfram Alpha in Desmos, in fact, and I got the graph, but you can actually get that from the discussion that we had here. So the graph looks like this, which would mean that if I have two numbers on this side, I know exactly which one would be larger. So if I have A here and B here, then I would know exactly which one is larger. If I have two points here, then I would also know which one is larger. And if I have two points here, I would also know which one is larger. But if I have a point to the right of E and to the left of E, then that would be a bit more complicated. So you would have to know when you draw a horizontal line here, whether this point is going to be to the left of B or to the right of B. And that's going to be more complicated. So to summarize, we could summarize it like this. If A and B are both positive but less than 1, then I know that a over natural log a would be less than b over natural log b. Because now we are in this branch of this function. So the function is decreasing. But because natural log a and natural log b are both negative, if I clear the denominators, I would get a natural log b is less than b natural log of a. So I'm multiplying both sides by natural log a times natural log b, which is in fact a positive number because a and b are both less than 1. Now, using properties of log, we get natural log of b to the power of a is less than natural log of a to the power of b. And natural log is an increasing function, strictly increasing in fact, so b to the power of a is less than a to the power of b. So if a and b satisfy this property, then b to the power of a is less than a to the power of b. 
Now let's take a look at the other case. So if A is greater than B, but they are both more than 1 and less than E, then A over natural log A is going to be less than B over natural log B. This is the branch that is right here, so this branch. And of course the function is still decreasing. And in this case, when I multiply by natural log A and natural times natural log B, because both natural log A and natural log B are positive, I would get basically the same thing. So I would get A natural log B is less than B natural log A. And in fact, that gives me natural log of B to the A is less than natural log of A to the B, which would mean B to the A is less than A to the B. So under this condition, I would also get B to the A is less than A to the B. Now what happens if A and B are more than E, if A is greater than B more than E, then I know the function is increasing, it's the branch that is increasing, so it's this portion that is increasing. So it would be A over natural log A is greater than B over natural log of B. And that would mean A natural log B is greater than B natural log A which would mean natural log of B to the A is greater than natural log of A to the B, which would mean B to the A is more than A to the B. So this is the case when A and B are more than E. Now, if one of the numbers is equal to E, you know that that's a local minimum in this graph. So if I raise the parts that I don't need, that would be a local minimum. So at this point, you won't have any other, any other solution. So that would be exactly less than everything else. So if A is more than 1 and A is not E, then A over natural log A would be more than E over natural log E. So that means A natural log E is greater than E natural log A. And of course that tells you E to the power of A is greater than A to the power of E. So this is also another case. It's an interesting case. And as I said, when your numbers are on the opposite sides of E, E comma E, then it becomes more complicated. There's no way of like coming up with an explicit uh, answer for this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, my focus is on dealing with problem solving methods and going through the process by which I obtain the solutions. So feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And I will see you in the next video.